Hello. Today we want to add a calendar to Power Apps, and we do it with a bunch of galleries, named formulas, and date functions. By the way, this is not a beer and popcorn show. You should roll up your sleeves and do it with me. Let's rock. To build our calendar, I'd rather start with a little bit of cheating. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. So let's look at the calendar that we have seen it before many, many, many times. And that's going to be our Windows calendar. In reality, we want to build something like this. So if you carefully take a look at it, you will see this guy has one gallery on the top with the weekdays. And right under that, there is another gallery starting from a certain day in the month. So basically the first Sunday before the beginning of the month, if the first day of the month is not Sunday, and then it goes on to the last day of the month. For now, let's start with something simple. We want to build this gallery. It looks like a horizontal gallery, but if you know that you can have multiple columns inside a vertical gallery, the job is going to be a lot easier. So let's do it. To build your week gallery, you add a vertical gallery to the screen, not the horizontal, although it looks horizontal. Well, you can do it with horizontal gallery, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. You have to tune a lot more things. So inside Power Apps, I've already created an app called Calendar Demo YouTube. And inside it, there is just one screen. There is nothing else. It's just created. I haven't done anything to it. So I want to insert my gallery. I add a vertical gallery, and this vertical gallery should have the names of the week. First of all, let me get rid of everything inside it. I want it to be blank. And here, I want to add the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, and to the end. Now, if I come back to the, to the gallery, on the first cell, I can insert a text, and it easily picks up the name of the week. But I don't want to show it in a column. I want to show them in a row, which is easy. I just need to expand this gallery and wrap count can. And for the wrap count, I set it to seven. Just like that, I have the top of the calendar for this text box. I want to set the position to five and five. Or well, let's make it 10 and 10 and but before doing anything else, let me just rename it properly. I call it gal week. Now for the width of this gal week dot template width minus 20. So it's going to be centered. I can simply align it to center. Now it looks like something cool. I can increase the font size maybe a little bit, maybe 20. And I can change the fill color of this text box inside it to whatever I like. So now I have the week gallery on the top. I can make it smaller. This is cool. So I added the vertical gallery to the screen. Items is an array of strings that has weekdays, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday to the end of the week, and then set the number of the columns, which was wrap count to seven, and add the text label to the gallery and fit it to the center. This is exactly what we did. And your final gallery should look like this. Well, not bad. We only need to set the border to make it exactly like that. So let me set the border to maybe two. So it's going to look like this. Beautiful. Now, we want to build the second part of the gallery. But if you see here, August has 31 days. It starts from the middle of one week and ends in the middle of the very last week. But what about something else like October that has 31 days, but for this year, it starts from the first week, but it doesn't extend to the last row. And although it doesn't get there, Microsoft still puts it there, but it's grayed out. And even for something like February, which is 28 days, even though both those last rows are not part of this month, Microsoft still puts it there. So let's accept that our month calendar always has 42 items, seven times six. And for us, the challenge is finding this first day 
of the month calendar. Not the first day of the month, the first day of the month calendar. And that is very straightforward. And here is the process. To build a month calendar, you need the collection or array of 42 days in a row, one after another, starting from the first Sunday before the month starts. There are different ways to do that and calculate the first day of the month calendar. And for this one, I want to use named formula. We can do it without named formula. It is fairly new. It's almost year and a half, two years that this feature has been added to Power Apps. If you are not familiar with it, Reza has a wonderful video. I will put the link somewhere right here so you can click on it and go there and watch the video in case you are not familiar with the named formula. If you are, just skip that part and join me for the next part. First, I start by getting the first day of the current month on a start and put it in a global variable. Just like that, I can use the date function so I get the year of today, I get the month of today, and I just use one referring to the first day of the month. So let's do it. Inside my app, I go to the app on a start, and just like this, I can say set, I call it var calendar month, comma, and I'm gonna use the date function. Date function accepts three parameter. Year is the year of today. Month is the month of today. And day is one. I added an extra bracket here. We are good. Let me run it and see what we get inside it. Run on start, var calendar month. Today is September 1st and it returned the first. Any other date that you pass here, we gotta be good. Let me put a label here on the top first. I can say insert text and this text is gonna show me the month and the year that we want to display. So here I can say var underscore calendar month I don't want to show it like that. I want to say use the text to format it and show me the year and month. M, M gives you the number of the month. If you add the third M, it gives you the short form of the month. And if you use four M's, it's going to show you the complete name of the month. I just increase the font size. We want it to look good. 20. Yeah, it should be good. Now that I have the first day of the month, I need to calculate the first day of the calendar. And that's how we do it. We deduct the weekday value from the first day of the month and add one to it. If it sounds too complicated, let me break it down for you. I add a text here. It's not part of the calendar, but I just want to show you what's going on here. So I can pick, for example, today. Today is September 1st. Today is Monday. Inside Power Apps, you have a function called weekday. And weekday always returns you a number. For Monday, it returns two. For Sunday, it returns one. So knowing this number, I know how many days I should cut from today to get to the first Sunday before the month starts, right? So if it is two, I can deduct two from today. I will be right before the first Sunday or basically the first Saturday before the month starts, right? So let's do it. I would say date add two today. Add weekdays of today, but I don't want to add, I want to deduct. And I just close the bracket. It took me to the 30th and 30th is Saturday. I don't need that for this weekday. I want to add one to it. And it takes me to the 31st. August 31st is Sunday. So that's going to be the first day of my calendar. But we really don't need today because today was inside a variable. So instead of today, I can use var underscore calendar month, which is the first day of the current month. And I can use exactly the same thing, right? Same result. But here is the thing. Let me just save it. And I just want to add up and down buttons to this calendar. You may set the size yourself. 
Okay, when someone pushes the down button, it should go to the next month, which means I should be able to say set var underscore calendar month. I want to shift it to the next month. So let's say date add to the var calendar month. I want to add one time unit of month. Close the bracket and another bracket. We are good. And I can do exactly the same thing for this guy, which is going to take me to the previous month. I just get rid of this false. And instead of one, I want to put minus one. Correct. Let me just save it. You see our text canvas has disappeared. It's because we are working with the variables and this guy doesn't know the current value of that variable. No problem. I just need to run on start and they will both appear. Let me run it and see the result. We are looking into September. We are looking into 831st. And if I go to the next month, we are looking into October, but the first Sunday before October is 28th of September. So whatever the calendar that we have, if you are looking into October month, the first Sunday here is going to be September 28, September 29, and so on and so forth. And then October starts. I don't want to have this calculation here. This, this calculation must happen in a named formula. So let me just get a copy of it. We go to the app. We go under formulas and I can say first Sunday of month calendar equals to this value. It complains because at the end of every named formula, you have to put the semicolon. So now instead of putting all this calculation here, I can put the named formula here, which is going to be first Sunday of month calendar. Same thing, right? Now you understand what this formula means. And just like that, you have the first day of the month calendar. So the first date that's going to show up there. Let's do it. Well, we did it already, which was the difficult part. Now let's do the easy part. And it is easy if we use the named formula. Let's see how we can do it. We need to create an array of 42 days starting from the first date of the month calendar as a named function. When we want to create an array, we either use collect or clear collect, but we have 42 days in a sequence. Sequence, sequence, sequence. Are you familiar with sequence function? Let's see how we can do that. So we go to the formulas of the app and I want to have an array. I call it var underscore month calendar items. And let's start by using a sequence. For the sequence, you need to specify the number of the records that we want to have in that sequence. And for us, it's 42. We want to start from zero and we want to go by one increments. Let me just close it and put the semicolon in the end. Great. So let me just run the on start again. Now we can add the gallery because we have this variable, although it still doesn't have dates inside it, but that's an easy one. I can say insert gallery. I want to add a vertical gallery. I want it to be blank, bring it down a little bit, and I want to make it the same width as the other gallery. I want to give it a name as gal month calendar. Let me just expand it. Now here is the interesting part. Items. I want to say var month calendar items. Doesn't show me anything. That's all right. I go to the first cell and I want to insert a tiny text here. There we go. And this guy is showing me the number zero, one, two, three, whatever. Okay. We already know that we can get the entire gallery and we can set the wrap count to seven. So in every row, it shows you one number, but these numbers are the numbers of the sequence. Do I need to tell you more or you can guess that? 
I go back to my app. I go to the named formula. Instead of just having the sequence, which is a table with one single column called value, I can add another column to it. I can go to the end and I can say for the column an item date. And that item date is going to be the expression of date add. I'm going to get the first Sunday of the month. So first Sunday of the month calendar. And I want to add this record dot value, which is going to be the 0 to 42 from this sequence, time unit days. And I just close this bracket. And another one for the add columns. Let me just run the app on start back here. But here now, for this text, instead of showing the value, I can come here and say add the column that I just added, which is going to be item date. It shows me the full item date. I don't want the full item date. I only want the day part of the date. So I can say day and close this and you have everything. The only thing is that you want to set the template fill to gray if the day is not in the current month, which is very easy. I can simply come back here. I can pick the template fill and I can say if this item, item date is greater than or equal to var calendar month, then color dot white, otherwise color dot light gray. And I just close this. You see the first condition is applied. So the first column, which is out of this month, is grayed out. I can simply add the second condition here. I can say and the same formula, but this time the item date is smaller than next month, which is going to be date add. And I add one month to the beginning of the month. It's going to be one and it's going to be time unit dot month. Close the bracket and here we go. And just like that, let me just format text. And this is how it looks like. As simple as that. Let me just save it and see if I can actually navigate between the months. Run. And I can go to the next month, October, November, December, and I can go back in these months. Let's see what we did. We created an array of 42 days starting from first day of the month calendar using sequence. We created a vertical gallery with seven columns and we use the month array as items. We take care of the cosmetics and just like that, you are done. Let's go for a beer, but hold on. Do not celebrate too early. This is not over yet. You created this calendar and I'm pretty sure there are lots of things you want to do with it. Well, there is a part two to this video that I will make it next month. Now, you have a month from today to tell me what you want me to add to part two in the comments section. Now, apart from your comments, crushing those like and subscribe buttons will definitely improve the quality of the future videos and it will make my day, let's face it. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon in the next video. Thank you.